How's that? Okay, so I'm going to start off with a, uh, a waltz in E flat. Not a lot is known about this, it's one that I just learned to play over the years and enjoyed playing and still do. So uh, basically, this waltz was written by Mary E. Walsh around 1900 after Beethoven and many others had turned the piano into a dynamic instrument. But this is a nice, gentle, easy piece of music. There seemed to be a lot of anticipation earlier, so I'm hoping it was worth the wait. The next piece is another, it's a waltz by Brahms, waltz in A flat, very famous piece of music. And again, no idea why I bumped into it, started playing it, and I happen to really, really like it, and I hope you do too.
This next piece of music playing at uh, my brother-in-law's office over in Mariba the other day, and I thought, I said to him, "This is an amazingly ubiquitous piece of music, is it?" And he goes, "What is it?" So many people know this next piece of music. Some of you may recognise it. across this when I watched The Muppet Show. Ralph played this piece on The Muppets and the whole way through the audience kept on sort of sniggering and laughing thinking is there a joke coming but there wasn't a joke. He just played the Minu A and G by Beethoven which is actually a piece that was uh, written, originally written for an orchestra but the uh, orchestral score was lost after his death and this is the piano version. Hope you like it. Praise be to The Muppets.
The next one is actually a piece for an opera. It's the Grand March from the opera Aida. It was in a book of piano solos. So even though it's not really originally a piano piece, I have been playing it as a piano piece. And interestingly enough, when it comes to opera, I'm not really a fan of opera. But in 2015, I've got a friend who lives over in Italy, and he got married in 2015, and we went over for the wedding. And the wedding was suspiciously close to Verona. So since we were in Italy, in the home of Italian opera, we decided we'd go and see an opera. And we saw it at the amphitheatre at Verona, which is very similar to the Colosseum. And it was a fantastic night, this huge open-air stadium with people everywhere, people holding cigarette lighters and stuff. It hasn't converted me to uh, opera, but it was a lovely night. Anyway, this is the Grand March from Aida. So this next piece is a minuet in G written by a chap called I.J. Paderewski, who was a Polish chap who lived at the start of the 1900s. And he appears to have been a little bit of an all-round talented bloke because he ended up becoming the Prime Minister of Poland at the end of the First World War. And he performed that role for a number of years before he retired from politics to go back to his favourite passion of playing the piano. And he was actually living late enough that there was actually a recording of him playing this piece himself. So, here now is Paderewski's Minuet in G.
Brasil. Now, the next one, Turkish Rondo. This was composed by a chap called Daniel Stuybelt. He's not a name that springs to mind, is it? But, it turns out, old mate Stuybelt was a contemporary of Beethoven's. And he has gone out in history because he challenged Beethoven to a duel. Not a guns or sword sort of duel, but a piano duel. And to understand this, you need to know that at that point in time, when people were performing, they were expected to do some improvisation of their own, either on the piece they were playing or something afterwards. So if you get the score for Beethoven's third piano concerto, you get to the end of the first movement, and there's a bit that says, at this point, you're supposed to make up your own. But if you don't feel like doing that, here's one that Beethoven wrote that's pretty cool. And that's the one that you'll hear on records today, because most people have decided it's a bit hard to go past Beethoven. But anyway, this is the story. In those days they used to improvise and that was part of their performance. And our mate Stuybelt was in piano at the time. He was a fairly popular performer on his own. He was playing piano and he was writing stuff for piano and he was fairly popular so he was in piano and he was introducing some music. But he'd flagged off Beethoven and basically said he thought Beethoven wasn't that good. And you might know that Beethoven did have a reputation for having a bit of a temper, so he didn't take too kindly to this. And after uh, a couple of incidences over a couple of weeks, Steibelt was unveiling a bit of his own music. It was a trio or something for piano and violin and cello. And Beethoven happened to be in the audience. And when they'd finished their, their prepared music, Steibelt again gave Beethoven a poke and said, oh, he wouldn't, wouldn't be going to come up here and play the piano. Now, if you Google this, you'll actually find there's a video of it, which is a little bit surprising because I didn't think they had cameras in those days. But anyway, there are eyewitness accounts of it. And uh, a number of them basically say words to the effect that Beethoven got up and walked towards the piano. And one of his students said he played best when he was either very happy or very angry. Now, on this occasion, he was angry. And on the way to the piano, he walked past the music holder for the cello, picked up the music and put it on the piano, turned it upside down and pointed to three notes. And then he started playing. Now apparently he played so well that Steiber left that hall in embarrassment and said he would never set foot in Vienna again and didn't want to be in any town where Beethoven was present. <laughs> so, Steiber, 250 years later, everyone knows Beethoven like at, on the 250th anniversary of his birth, ABC FM had a top 100 Beethoven countdown. There aren't too many composers of any genre that have a top 100 songs that so many people know. But Steibelt, he's gone down to history because he challenged Beethoven to a duel and lost. Anyway, this piece is called The Turkish Rondo. It's written by Steibelt and it's not a bad piece of music anyway. So I'm going to play that for you now.
So there you go. Start our separate contribution to history apart from challenging Beethoven to a duel. Okay, I'm going to play a couple of pieces now. One, one is the, it's the song by Carole from an opera called The Tales of Hoffman. And again, I'm not really a fan of opera so much, but this was in the, uh, the piano solos book and it was arranged for piano. It's a beautiful piece and many people know it. You may know it or recognise it. But oddly enough, it also finishes with exactly the same notes as the start of the Schubert Serenade. And over the years, I mean, I've been playing this for more years than I care to remember, but I habitually saw sort of finish one and then lead into the other. So I'm going to do that tonight. I'm sure you'll notice the change over from one to the other. First off, Bach Roll from the Tales of Hoffman and then a Schubert Serenade.
Thank you. I'm going to finish this first set with a, a waltz by a chap called Duran. Apparently not much is known of it because you can't find much out if you Google him, but this is a nice piece of music. After that we're going to have a break where you've got a chance to gallop off. I haven't mentioned the word raffle for about 20 minutes now, so I really need to trot that word out and buy your last set of raffle tickets and then we'll be doing the raffle draw in the break. You can go and grab a coffee, they're champing at the bit to do coffees over there, I can tell. And then I'll come back and I'll play a bit more afterwards.
Most people don't know that Beethoven for a while tried doing a child minding business. And he wrote this little lullaby as a way of helping children go to sleep. Didn't work terribly well, went out of business pretty quickly.
Thank you. Now, normally at classical concerts, you don't stop between movements on a uh, piano sonata like this. But I love the sound of my own voice, and I don't believe you can hear too much of it, even if I'm not saying the word rattle every five minutes. This next piece, the second movement of the Pathetic Sonata, is one of the most beautiful pieces in the world. When they did the top 100 countdown of Beethoven pieces, I can't remember the exact list at the moment, but this was up around in the top 20. So there's plenty of people who agree with me. This is a beautiful piece of music. It's one that I will sometimes sit down the piano if I just feel like playing some nice music, I'll sit down and I'll just play this next piece. The second movement of the Pathetic Sonata. So, well, let's see how it goes. Thank you. 
you. So really, that was the piece that started my journey with Beethoven on, because I was listening to it on a record, and I thought it would be nice to be able to play that. And someone said, well, why don't you try it? And I thought, what have I got to lose? I got the sheet music, found a few notes, and thought, hmm, you're right, it does sound okay. Hope you like it. Do you, you agree? It's a beautiful piece of music. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Now I'm going to move on to the third movement, the pathetique, the one which I don't play much because I've never really practiced enough to keep me working on it, but I have been working on it over the last couple of months. There's a chance this is going to send a okay to.
So the next piece of music I was going to play was the Moonlight Sonata. An amazing number of people think this only has one bit of music in it, but that's the first movement, the slow one. And of course, sonatas were a defined form of music. They, they had three movements, and each one it was usually fast, it was usually soft, and it was usually fast. Loud, slow, loud. And Beethoven decided to do it differently with this one. <coughs> we had a record when I was younger. It had a bust of Beethoven. In the background was a, a moonlit lake with cloud, storm clouds in the distance. And in my mind, this summed up Beethoven. It starts out with a nice, serene, relaxed feel, and then it builds up into a storm. So, this is the first movement. Beethoven himself, actually, this was so popular during his own lifetime that he actually couldn't understand it. And he, he said once, surely I've written better music. But 250 years later, this is still a classic. I'm sure most of you will recognise it.
now I'm going to do the second movement of Mary Light Sonata. This one's a bit short one. me to the third movement and the main light sonata. I don't know how many of you know this one, but it's the sort of piece of music that most people would avoid. You might figure out why.
Thank you very much. That was the list of pieces that I prepared for tonight. So that's basically it for tonight's concert. Awesome. I'd like to thank you all for coming along and supporting Paper Lands Music Live. We look forward to seeing you again. We support all types of music. It's not just classical. This is the first time we've done classical music here. So.